there's a lot of aspects of weather that are true or that are important regardless of what kind of agricultural system you're talking about. And that is a broad statement that's applicable to farmers everywhere on the planet. I want to take a closer look at, um, you know, the data science aspects in making weather forecasts. What value weather driven insights bring to agriculture today? The simple truth is that is the one way to be able to know what's going to be happening in agriculture in the future. That weather is the single biggest driver of what happens in agriculture. It doesn't matter what crop you're talking about. It doesn't matter where it's being grown. Weather drives agriculture. And what you is unique about weather compared to other data sets that are being used in more and more across the agricultural space is the only one that is forward looking. You know, people hear a lot about satellite imagery these days, and it's great, it's incredibly useful. I'm using it for my own work, but it's inherently retrospective. And so weather data and detailed, consistent, that spatially precise weather data allows you to have that forward look as to what's going to be happening in agricultural field, you know, tomorrow, a week from now, two weeks from now, essentially as far forward as you're willing to work with the forecast. One of the questions that comes to my mind is, is data driven insights relevant only for rain dependent agriculture, or it is also relevant for agriculture in developed countries where, you know, the water is not the problem. Okay, there's three kinds of agricultural systems. There's rain-fed, irrigated, and hydroponic. And for all three, it's relevant, and this is both the developed and the developing world. First, to address hydroponic, even that's relevant because, you know, these buildings are outdoors, that they have ambient weather conditions, and that you still have to optimize over how that's going to impact it. But saying that aside, I mean, that's a relatively small part of agriculture. Irrigated and rain fed, even in the developed or in the developed world, there's still a huge amount of rain fed agriculture. I mean, take the U.S., for example, only about I believe it's about 40 percent of agriculture is irrigated. By far, most of it is rain fed. And even when you have irrigated agriculture, it doesn't mean that you have unlimited access to water. Um, You know, California, for example, just because you have access to irrigation doesn't mean you can put as much water on the crops as you want. And so you still need to understand what's gonna be happening in the weather to know when it's most optimal to irrigate, when it's um, like uh, it has impacts in fertilization, that there's a lot of aspects of weather that are true or that are important regardless of what kind of agricultural system you're talking about. And that is a broad statement that's applicable to farmers everywhere on the planet. Can you explain why there is a connection between the utilization of uh, fertilizant and the weather forecast? What, where is the connection? The major driver of how weather impacts fertilization decisions is making sure that the fertilizer is still there when the crops need it. So typically when a farmer chooses to fertilize, It's not just based on when the plant is going to need it, that they have to balance it against other agricultural decisions. Like, you know, when can they get the machinery in the field? Um, When can they balance that against other operations that they need to be doing? And that there's major points in a crop's development where it needs the fertilizer. And if it's not there when it's necessary, you might as well not put on the first place. And where weather comes into this primarily is that the most important nutrient is nitrogen, which is also the one that's easiest to wash away. And so if you put down all of your nitrogen fertilizer and then a big rain comes before the plant is going to need it, you either just aren't going to have any, the enough fertilizer there or you're going to have to reapply it, which you know adds the economic cost of producing that crop. There's other nuances there, but that's the by far biggest driver of how weather impacts things like fertilization decisions.